Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to Ayasol Farm. Ha! Oh, I've waited a while to be able to say that, but here we are on the brand new version of the map that's come out on ModHub today. This video is going to be a map tour. Uh, we have an awful lot to get through, but um, we are here at the main farm. Here's the farmhouse, which is your starting location. Iasalt is a 4x map. Uh, that means it's four times the size of a regular in-game map. It's four by four kilometers in size. Um, it supports seasons fully. Uh, there are changing textures, foliages on trees, bushes, um, the ground, everything you can pretty much expect, and there are in-season features. However, today, just uh, for the sake of simplicity and to show off the map with a little bit of greenery on it, um, I am playing it pretty much in completely vanilla version. The other aspect is that Ayers Hall is also now fully integrated with the uh, Maze Plus Forage and Horse Extension. Um, mod so it means there's a whole bunch of new crop types and ways of feeding your animals if you have that mod activated it also supports uh, animal pen extension uh, you'll be able to put pipes up for your animal stables and it also has support for the uh, manure system mod as well so there is a whole bunch of things um, that's already built into this uh, very very large map with a ton of features. Um, today I'm showing it off basically in vanilla um, on new farmer mode. I won't spend a lot of time on uh, the different modes. Uh, you'll be able to explore those obviously. I will cover a little bit about the kind of machinery you can expect to see in new farmer mode in case you are playing the map for the very first time. You get a car, it's there. That one is static. But over here uh, we've got our first shed where you will find some of your tractors. I'll just hop down on the ground here so we can see that you actually get um, four decent sized tractors, uh, drop nose Matthew Ferguson with the front loader plus three larger ones. That is because fields on iOS are generally quite large. You are going to need some pretty serious machinery to be getting on with this map. Um, we have a bunch of sheds. We're going to do a sort of whistle stop tour of the farm area itself. And the first thing I need to mention is, although this looks like one big farm complex, you only own the central bit of it right now, uh, in the beginning, as a new farmer. Um, I have purchased in the stable buildings, but I will just show you on a map what this means, because it's quite important. You will not be able to open the doors to buildings unless you own all of them here on the farm complex. So we're up here at the farm and I'm just going to swap over so you can see viable areas. Now, as I mentioned, I've already purchased them in, but the pig enclosure here, if you're a new farmer, you will not have that to begin with, and it costs 38,000 to buy it in. You need to own that to be able to open the doors to the pig stable and the shed next door, for example. The other area up here, the cow pasture, is also not owned in new farmer mode. And again, you need to buy it in order to be able to use the cow stable and the additional sheds uh, sort of up this end of the map as well as the silage clamps. Finally, there's a small area just up here next to the brewery icon. Um, again, you won't own that when you start out. I have purchased them in so I can show you how they work. Um, that one contains the workshop and uh, you will need uh, that one if you want to be able to fix your vehicles on the farm. So in addition to that, when you're on New Farmer, um, I have purchased uh, the horse paddock, um, but you don't start with that one. But you do start with the fields that you see here. So field 14 over here next to the horse paddock, field 30, 32, uh, and 29 and 31 right around the farm. And then you own this large forest area here as well. So if, if you are um, into forestry, that's a really good area to start. There's a huge amount of value that can be extracted from that straight off in, in new farmer mode. 
So before we go much further, um, as I mentioned, this is a 4x map, so I'm going to zoom out a bit for overview here, because although those fields are big, there are even bigger ones. There's a total of 61 fields on the map, uh, and in addition, there's numerous forestry areas. Um, there are some purchasable areas where you can build your own farms if you don't want to start on, on the main complex. Up to the north, we've got a sheep pasture that you can you can purchase as a little farm. As I mentioned, we've got the horse paddock uh, over here. Uh, then you see these little gray areas. Um, they're often in, in small areas like this you can buy. They are basically pre-leveled flat areas that you could buy in uh, if you want to build your own farm or if you want to set up an additional um, area uh, for building sheds on or uh, having a contractor's yard or something like that. These gray areas are basically ready to place buildings on uh, without having to do any leveling uh, with the terraforming tool or anything like that. Field prices are pretty high because they are big. Field 15 right across the road from the farm, for example, will cost you 661,728 euros in this case. Um, 520 for 17 and as we move over to even bigger ones you're up over uh, a million euros so generally speaking is this a farm for um, probably bigger machinery however you could also go a bit more quietly at it up here in, in the sheep pasture for 26,000 and there are some smaller fields like field 18 is 280 but you do get a forestry area with it uh, fields 11 and 12 12 is only 75,000 and 11 is 203,000. Um, remember, it's a 4x map, so when you look at these fields, uh, sort of on zoom out level, they might not seem that big, but um, we'll have a look up at field 29 in a little while, so we can get an impression of the size. So here we are, we're back in the yard. As I mentioned, I have purchased um, the animal stables, so we can go and have a look at them. But first, I'm just going to do a little sort of flyover overview. Um, we got the main road sort of up through the farm. Uh, we got an entrance in between the trees here that will take us out, sort of our main entrance to the farm. Over on this side, we got the yellow shed, the pig stable. Uh, on on that side, uh, we got this big black roofed engine shed um, that is quite large, excellent for storing machinery. We got silage clamps. There are four silage clamps on the map now. Previously, there was only two in previous versions, but um, because we're now supporting the horse extension, um, there's room for more silage. Each one has lamps on it as well that you could use when you own the silage clamp. Coming further up to the top of the map, you've got a cow stable uh, with a large pasture on the side there. We got a couple of additional machinery sheds over on this side. Again, if you can't open the doors to those, you probably haven't bought the cow stable area. And finally, up here, we got sort of um, one last little shed um, before we connect back out to the main road, sort of on the other side of the little village that exists around the farm. Um, as I mentioned, we we're going to have a quick look at a field just to get a sense of the the scale of things so obviously this one is already grown here um, if I just turn our view back on here we can see that we've got some wheat that's ready to harvest um, right now I don't have any of the mods for additional field info or anything like that um, but if I just kind of fly out a bit over this field it will give you a sense of scale as you can see uh, there are hills it's it's not a f completely flat map it's not a sort of super steep map but at the same time this field here um once you've got some large machinery trying to pull up the field down here at the back uh it is fairly steep and as you can see this is a very very large field and on new farmer this is one of your starting fields so from that perspective you actually get a huge amount of land straight off the bat and you are going to be busy farming straight away so next up we are going to take a quick look at some of the central facilities here on um, the main yard and then we're going to move out take a look at the other animal points that i included 
Um, then we are doing a whistle stop tour through cell points in general. Um, and on the way, I'll just talk a little bit about sort of the features. There are some places where you can buy supplies as well. So we'll be taking a look at that. Um, there's a lot to get through. So um, I will perhaps try to put some timestamps into the description if there are particular sections you want to jump to. What I will also put into the description is the link to um, the Map Creator Data Learns Discord channel. It will be the place to go if you have questions or need support on the map. Um, there's a really good and supportive community there. So do drop by and share your enthusiasm for the map um, once you've had a go at this. But for now, we're gonna start taking a look at animal stables. So first we're coming over to the pig stable, um, as I mentioned a couple of times, because it's, it's a very common mistake to make and go, oh, something's wrong, it's not working, I can't open the doors. You need to buy the area first. Um, the main area here is the pig stable. Um, we have a central area here uh, where you can drop your feed for the pigs. This is a large stable. It has room for 1,500 pigs. Um, we have gates and we can open this gate here if we want to sort of drive our feed machinery straight through. Pigs have outdoor access here as well. And um, when pigs um, make a mess, uh, they don't drop feed out in the center aisle. They drop manure here at the back aisle on both sides of the uh, stable. So you'll need to pick that up instead. Each um, quarter of the stable has these orange controls that allow you to open and close the kind of windbreak wall. Um, so if you're playing with seasons, for example, and it's, you know, you feel it's getting warm or you need additional shelter for the pigs, then you can um, raise and lower that in each quarter of the stable here. Uh, we also have light switches that work on a half section of the stable. So this switch over here, will turn it on all the way up and down on one side. And if we hop over to the other side here and we open that, then we turn it on on the other side. And of course, these doors here can be opened and closed as well. So in terms of feed that goes in the center aisle, if you have a straw blower, you can drive it down the center aisle and blow straw in uh, for bedding as well. If you're using bales, you wanna come in, there's a door here, straw bale area. You wanna come in and drop your bales directly onto the grating here, and uh, that will provide straw coverage as well. The buying and selling point or loading and unloading point for pigs is right here um, on this door. Manure will appear here uh, in addition uh, to the waste that's being produced here, they will produce regular manure to be put in there as well. Uh, slurry point is over on the other side of the building here. Down this side. Right here, and as you can see, we have the marker. It's manure system ready for filling up your slurry tankers. We also get this yellow shed. I left the door open, I can see, and the lights on, but um, it's, it's a large space. Obviously you can use it for whatever you want. I've always taken the little fans at the side here to indicate that it's a kind of root crop storage um, and it could be used as such, but of course you can use it for anything you want. Further in the pig area, we have a pig feed mixer. So you can see we need maize, root crops, uh, oil seeds, grain to produce pig food. Um, it has a gate here to open, but in order for that to work, you need to go around the side here. You need to come into this little box, and this is where we're gonna turn on the, fe fe the feed mixer. It gets a little bit loud when we do that, but once it's running, we can now open this, and we can tip in here all the components that's needed to mix the feed. And as you can see, we have warning lights flashing as well as this is happening. So, just go around here and stop it again uh, if you're not mixing feed. Once you've tipped some in, if you want it to be mixed, you need to leave it running. If you're playing with the horse extension Maze Plus, uh, we got a tank here that will ferment your CCM um, to be able to feed it uh, to your pigs, for example. And you've got an overloading point here for the feed mixer. And 
that's about it for the pig area. Um, if we go around the side and we kind of come back into the main farm area here, we've got a small set of silos here. They're kind of, uh, they cover potatoes, sugar beet, sugar cane, uh, carrots and onions. I will touch on the grain types uh, in just a minute as we head over to the silo hall as well. Um, but this is broadly speaking the root crops uh, as well as sugar cane. Um, if you're running seasons on the map, um, the map ships with its own geo. That geo will disable cotton and sugar cane. If you're playing without seasons or you modify the geo, then of course you will be able to. The map is set up to accept both cotton and sugar cane, so you can farm in whichever you, way you want. The second silo hall is this quite large building here. It's a kind of drive through system. We've got a set of uh, smaller grain bins in here and there's an unload area so you can drive through you can get a big truck in here and around the corner it can be a little bit tight but it can be done i've done it several times uh, you'll unload there and you can come back through here if you want to pick up grain to take to a cell point your overloading pipe is here on the outside and as you can see i've already got the lights on here but uh, the light switch is right in here to turn lights on and on there aren't any gates uh, on this shed so it is open uh, year round to turn it in and out but I think this is a good point um, just to talk about the different crop types so we're just gonna have a quick look at the crop type list in the map section um, as I mentioned the map supports the horse extension and a whole range of crop types has been added there were already several custom crop types on IOS hold in before that um, but they are all available even if you're playing without the horse extension mod. So you will still be able to grow and harvest these crops. So going through the crop list, we have all the standard ones over here. Wheat, barley, oat, cotton, canola, sunflower, soybeans, corn, potato, sugar beet, oilseed radish. We've got the poplars, We've got the grass. If I turn it on, you'll see grass is constrained to the fields. All the surrounding areas are not harvestable grass in that sense. We got the sugar cane and we got rye as, as a custom grain type on the first page. As I mentioned, cotton and sugar cane will not work with the ISOL Geo if you're running seasons, but everything else will have a, a seeding window. But there are even more crops. Moving on to page two, we've got triticale, millet, spelt, and then we got alfalfa, clover field grass, horse grass, pasture grass, carrots, onions, and miscanthus. If you have played with the horse extension or the forage extension uh, Mace Plus mod, you will recognize the need to use some of these to feed your animals when you run that mod. Um, if you're not playing with it, you can still use these. Field grass is a type of grass um, that you will be able to harvest with a combine to get grass seed and the combine will spit out a, a, a grass swath, basically. Horse grass, you can make horse silage, uh, which is very different from regular cow silage um, in many ways. Pasture grass basically works the same way as regular in-game grass, um, but it looks really nice. It's a really nice texture. Carrots and onions at root crops, if you're playing with the um, horse extension, forage extension, then they will feature in, uh, carrots will feature in animal feed mixing. Um, but otherwise you can also just have it as an additional root crop. There's an embedded uh, harvester uh, header that you can use for these new uh, crop types, uh, root crop types as well. Miscanthus is a type of really long grass. Um, right now it's almost a bit like wood chips in a way you would cut it with a forage harvester and you can uh, sell it as various sell points around the map. Whew, that's a lot of crop types already, but Let's get back to the tour of the farm here. Around here, this is the shed that you buy in as the small area. As you can see on one side here, we got a, a small farm workshop. Well, I don't know if it's small, but okay. If you're trying to put your biggest combine harvest in, you might find that you might be struggling. But other than that, you know, you, you can get gear in and you can get it modified and, and repaired without any problems. You also get a sort of couple of um, additional uh, storage area here again with lights in over here we have the fuel point for the farm this 
is a refillable fuel point. So you start with some fuel in the tank, but uh, when you're running your farm, you need to refill your fuel tank. Again, the map ships with a modified MK8 trailer um, that you can use to bring fuel up to the farm. So you can drive to the fuel station, fill it up, bring it up here and fill it. And then you can just fill your machines for free directly from here. I really like this feature. There's several of, of, of these concepts around the farm that I will cover off. Um, but it just means, you know, they're not buying points. You actually do need to bring your material into the farm yourself. Moving around this shed, we have a water point right here. So um, all the animal areas will include the animal pen extension. So you can put pipes in um, so that you can you can have plumbing to, to fill the water troughs directly. But if you prefer to do it manually, you can collect water from here or if you need it for something else like greenhouses, for example. Around the back, we've got this sort of hard standing area, um, but there's the sound of running water underneath. So there's obviously good drainage here. So I tend to put a jet wash in here and use this as a kind of wash area when I bring back um, dirty machinery and, and such like. But of course, you can do it in whichever way you want. Moving around the side here, um, we've got another shed. If you're a new farmer, these machines come with it. You get water trailer, animal trailer, and a small uh, forage harvester. I would say, <laughs> if you are going to try and cover any of the Iosol size fields with this thing, uh, you need to be patient. That's going to take you a while. Looking down this way is sort of over the uh, cow area. As, as you can see, this is sort of a, a water area. The cows can go down and have a drink, but you still need to give the cows water. is isn't like there's no need to give them water. Um, but it's a nice little feature to have that. So they will walk down there and, and, and kind of stand in the water a bit as well. Um, main farm area. The only animal stable that's included on New Farmer with the main animal area is this, which is the chicken shed. So on the side here, we have a feed silo. Uh, you can unload feed here and it'll get pumped up into the silo and then subsequently into the building. If you buy and sell chickens, it's right here at the front. And the doors here can be opened and closed, of course. And we have a little sort of egg producing plant and you can even open the door and look into where the chickens are here. Um, egg boxes will appear out here in the little shed. so. They won't get all soggy when it rains. Two sheds that I included in, in the new farmer, um, right on the edge here, um, is this shed here, uh, where you have you will start with two cultivators and two plows. One thing I should notice about these doors is there are three doors uh, on the front of each one. You, you will see several of these sheds around the place. So you've got sort of three sets of doors. And if you open one, you might find that the doors on the other side are overlapping so you can see this door is now rolling up in front of the other one so you just have to keep that in mind when you're opening and closing the doors right sorry it's four doors not three doors but um you get the picture so now roll another door over in front of this one so um on either side you can typically just have the one door open and um you just need to work it out in your head and uh now we can open this one over here of course so it'll slide over in space like that. Um, it's just something that takes a little bit of getting used to sometimes. Likewise, we've got the same over here. We got a shed um, for the new farmer. Got uh, several trailers already included. One thing worth noticing on new farmer is you got a couple of weights and a leveling blade here, um, which is kind of easy to miss if you're just looking inside of the sheds. So. We're going to head up to the big central shed here, uh, kind of more or less in the middle of the farm. This one is open uh, to the elements. There are no gates on this, but um, it is fully seasons covered. So if you're playing with seasons, you can put things in here, uh, bales or whatever, and they will stay dry and, and covered. Um, in terms of new farm equipment, you start with both cedar and planter, some front loader attachment, a substantial mower setup, a weeder, uh, fertilizer spreader and sprayer as well um, but it's it's a very large shed there's room for a lot of machinery in here when we come around the corner here this is kind of our setup for when you need to do your fertilizing and, and spreading so we've got a big tank here on one end uh, 
you load up with herbicide. As you can see, this indicates the loading point right here. The other end of the tank is where you would pick up liquid fertilizer. So the same tank, either end, is kind of split in the middle. So it will supply you with both. Now these, unfortunately, are not refillable. These are just you're buying the liquid stuff straight out instead. But coming back to the refillable concept over here, we got uh, lime silos. Um, and they need to be refilled on the farm. So you got a refill point here. So you can buy in bulk in various places on the map. And then you can refill your silos here. And then, of course, you have an overload pipe to take it into your lime spreader or trailer or whatever it is that you're using. The same concept extends over here to seed and fertilizer on either side. They need to be refilled. You will have quite a bit in them to begin with, but you can refill them. Uh, you can buy in bulk from different places on the map and you can bring it up to the farm. And again, you just open these up, you tip your seed in, you pick your seed up uh, through the overload pipe right there. And the same concept for the fertilizer over on the other side. This shed is also quite substantial if you start a new farmer these are your machinery you start with a quite a large combine it's got both a grain header and a corn header you get a windrower baler and tether um, a forage wagon and a bale wagon as well uh, you got two entrances so i just had one open already there but uh, you can sort of come in through and of course we also have uh, lights working in this shed as well. On the other side of this wall, there's a, another big section of this shed, uh, which we will access in just a second. So, we've covered up a good part uh, of, the, of the yard here, but we're going to come around this side just to have a quick look at the silage clamps. Um, as I said, these are quite substantial. I've fitted about a million liters into one of these um, quite comfortably without really pushing too hard so you can fit a lot in each one of the silage clamps comes with floodlights that you can turn on so if you're working late at night getting your silage compacted you can get some lights on and uh, makes life a little bit easier coming up we got the second set of silage clamps right here and obviously when you are playing with the forage extension um, you have a whole range of new silage types that you can create hence why we now got four silage clamps on the map. As for the pigs, we have a feed mixer for TMR, uh, for hay, silage and straw. And uh, again, you need to walk in here, turn it on, light starts flashing, you can open up and then you can unload your material into here and the feed mixer will start working on it. But I'll turn it back on because it does get a little bit loud. Um, but most of the time, obviously, you're not sitting right next to it. Overload pipe to pick up TMR. Um, smaller shed up here. It, Although it's got open sides and everything like that, in terms of seasons, it is fully covered. So you can put your hay bales and your straw bales in here if you want. It's quite convenient if you're using them to load into, for example, the feed mixer. The other part of the engine shed, as I mentioned, on the other side of the wall is this side here. A uh, huge amount of space for whatever you might want to decide to use it for, whether you're parking combines, uh, tipping grain, storing bales. Um, and again, uh, we have a roller door on that one. So plenty of space. So we're now coming up towards the cows and the cow stable. Here is our, right here, the sort of cattle press. Um, is is the uh, loading or buying points for cows. And up the side, we got a relatively small manure area here. Uh, but there are places on the map where we can store manure. These are milk tanks. If you use the animal pen extension, we will get the automatic uh, uh, pickup for, for milk um, placed right there in the corner. So that's quite convenient. When you buy the um, cow stable, you also get these two sheds. Uh, slightly different styles of sheds, but by and large, same function as before with rolling doors that kind of overlap. So you just need to think about that. Um, but you have ample space for storage on the farm. That is for sure. So cow stable, I've already opened this gate, so that's nice and convenient. Watering point is down here. If you're doing it manually, if you're using the animal pen extension right up next to the entrance to the cows right here, 
where we have the door, you will find a set of blue pipes and an option to have the plumber come and install it for you next day. The tap will be up here and the pipe to load will automatically be placed down by the watering trough. So in the future, you just come up here and start your tap, leave it to run, fill the watering trough. These gates, of course, open and close. Um, I realized I didn't really show you that, but they open and close. Coming around the back here, uh, as I mentioned for the pigs, um, instead of dropping feed in the center aisle, animals will drop manure uh, for their waste, for their cleanliness, and that will be down this back aisle for, for the cows as well. Uh, so you need to scoop up from here to keep them clean. If you're using bales, um, straw bales to put down for bedding, drive them onto the grate here and drop them off and they'll get spread out for bedding. If you're using a straw blower, you can drive them down the central aisle here and this is also where you would take in a, a feed mixer or an unloader. Uh, animal, get, animal feed gets kind of dropped down along the trough right here. Um, what else is there to say? We got lights and we got uh, sort of side control uh, as well, just like we did in the pig stable. So we can turn the lights on and off there. We don't see a big difference right now uh, in terms of things uh, when we turn them on. Uh, but obviously, if you're playing with seasons on a dark winter's morning, it makes a big difference. You also have this control here uh, that kind of opens and closes these sides. Uh, let's see if we can see that going up. So, you know, uh, kind of like if you want to bring in some, some fresh air uh, during the summer or something like that. So those features are also built into the stable. Coming out here, the road kind of splits. We can turn straight out back up to the sort of central road, fire salt. Alternatively, we can hang a left and come down. We have a slurry pit right here, and that's the slurry pit connected to, to the cow stable. Um, it is also manure system ready. Uh, if you're not using the manure system, here's the marker. You just drive up with your uh, loader, and that will take care of that. That was quite busy, uh, <laughs> but I think we've made it through the bulk off the main farm. I hope I haven't forgot anything, but I'm sure I have to some extent or other. But I think it is time that we just had a quick look at the other um, built-in animal points. Obviously, you could build your own animal stables elsewhere on the map as well, of course. There's nothing preventing you from doing that. But there is a uh, sheep's area and there is a horse stable that we will just go and have a brief look at as well. So the two other animal points that we're going to take a look at that are built into the map um, is the sheep pasture up here to the north. Uh, if you want to buy it, it's 26,000. So we'll we'll buy it just for, for the sake of things. Um, and the other one is the horse paddock over here. Um, it's a quite large uh, facility for horses. So you can actually, um, you know, if you, if you wanted to play this just as a kind of livery farm, that's totally an option as well. But we'll hop over and take a look at the sheep pasture first. So here we are at the entrance to the sheep farm. As you can hear, there's nice running water just at the back. There's a stream down the back of it. You might not be able to hear it on the recording. I have the game volume set a little bit low. Coming in, there is a little house here. It doesn't have a sleep trigger on it. That's the main farmyard that has the sleep trigger uh, at the farmhouse. But you, yeah, you get the idea. It's a um, nice little kind of old style farm instead there are a few decorative items in there, but you could still place things in here uh, if you wanted to play on a small scale farm. Up here we have our sheep pasture. There's room for a lot of sheep on Isolt 900. This is the water trough right here at the front. So again, if you have the animal pen extension installed, you'll get the blue pipes appearing here and you can install that so that watering becomes an easier task. Um, over here is our feed trough for the sheep and depending on whether you're playing with the horse extension, obviously feeding is slightly different or if you're playing in base game, uh, your sheep will be there. And finally, here's our loading, unloading, buying point for the um, sheep as well. When you produce wool, you will come in here. I'll just stop flying so we can walk in. So we can see the guys are working hard on shearing the sheep here, and your wool pallets will appear here for you to pick up and take to 
one of the sell points. So all in all, uh, it's a nice compact little yard. Uh, I like the fact that we've got some mature trees in here as well. And uh, I'm just going to sort of hop around because the back of here is one of the areas that I find almost most picturesque of the whole map. Kind of come down to the stream right here through lots of undergrowth that will change with seasons as well. And uh, we have this nice stream running along here. I just find this area sort of very nice and relaxing. Nice back of the house where you can open your door and sit and enjoy uh, the water running past as well. But we've seen the sheep area now and we're gonna head up to the horse paddock instead. So once again, we start at the entrance, uh, as you can see. I should mention we get a lot of these kind of black and white signs all around the map that helps you navigate and find relevant uh, cell points and uh, locations to farms and such like as well. But as we head in, we've got a nice set of lamps here. Um, and then we get a set of buildings here. Now these gates, you, you can't open and close them, but the buildings will still respect seasons, so you can still use them to store bales in, for example, and it provides quite a bit of additional space for perhaps machinery and such like. In addition, if I just hop the wall here, we also have this actually quite large facility um, as part of the um, horse paddock here. Obviously, I'm opening these doors, so I have purchased the area. But as you can see, we've got quite a sizable set of garages here. So it is totally possible to use this as basically your main farm if you wanted to, if you just wanted to run horses. Coming around here, this is the main in-game horse stable. Um, here's our point for buying horses. Obviously right now I don't have very many mods in, uh, enabled, so I'm just seeing the standard in-game uh, horses and their costs. Um, the gates here open and close, um, and then we come in. This is the pasture grass that I talked about a little bit earlier. Um, this is where you will see your horses appear um, feeding uh, out from the other side obviously um, is you, you'll drop in to feed here and you can put straw down um, here in the area as well you got your water trough there again uh, fully compatible with animal pen extension in addition if you wanted to treat it as a sort of a riding school or anything like that or you want to take your horses jumping <laughs> You got a nice big open outdoor space so you have different ways of uh, exercising your horses and just sort of trotting them around the edge of a field at least you also have a large complex up here um, there's a few static items in this garage so you might not be able to use it for for parking things but there's a sort of riding hall in here uh, if you decide that you want to use it for that these doors open and close this is just a decorative building in many ways but um, you got some additional horse stables in here it gives a nice feel um, that this is working so and these areas you can also open and close um, so you got some additional storage there if you want it to take a horse inside um, the riding hall uh, you know during winter or something like that we have a set of gates here right now I've left them open I can see but um, you would open here you would bring your horse in through here come in through this set of gates and then here, you might find that these doors are closed, but you'll open up and you sort of have a practice area for your horses indoors as well. So actually, there's a lot of care and attention to horses uh, on this map, uh, which frankly is quite rare to see. So I'm, I'm, you are starting to see it on, on, on some of the maps coming out. But, but I think this is a really nice facility for, um, for horses and for paying attention to um, that side of, of farming simulator as well uh, come down the back area here one thing I feel I should mention in connection with that is that sort of right across the road we have this sort of forested area so if you still want it to ride your horses out for exercise purchasing the forest on the other side um, could could be a good way of doing that in addition you get two of these yards that I mentioned earlier that's sort of flattened and level so if you want it 
additional farm buildings for different types of livestock or anything like that. You could place them up here in the forest. Obviously, you can cut down the trees as well if you want to, but if you want it to a sort of nice area for riding your horses and consider combining it with some additional farm, this could certainly be an option. So that concludes the additional farm areas. Anything else that you want to put in in terms of stables and stuff like that, you can do that, of course, with, with placeables. But those are the ones that are on the farm. We can actually see out uh, to the first cell point um, that we're going to visit, which is a grain mill. But just before we do so, I'll just show you where we are on the map so you don't get completely lost. So if we look at, we have the main farm right here. And if I zoom out a bit, up to visit the sheep pasture, over to the horse paddock, we're now up through the store, uh, sort of forest area, we're coming up towards the grain mill, uh, so we're kind of going to be moving around in a counterclockwise uh, way off the map, we're going to go up to the garden centre, lime station, heating and biogas plant afterwards, and then we'll come down towards fodder shop, sawmill, water mill. And um, then there's a little village down here, and then further to the southeast, uh, there's another village. And then back in towards the center, we've got the campsite, uh, we've got the vehicle shop, we've got a center depot, which I will cover towards the end of the video, uh, which is basically a very large storage facility that you could use for additional crops. But we'll head up to the grain mill now and have a look at that one. I put a bit of speed on so we're moving a little bit faster but we're coming up past the grain mill here because it's kind of got a one-way system for driving in but the main entrance would be right here um, and if I just come down to ground a bit here there's a sort of large area up in front of the grain mill here but if you're coming to either sell or buy grain you'll carry on down the side of here if you're selling then the onload point is right here just take your truck up or your trailer up and you tip it in here. If you want to buy grain instead, we have a option right here for that. Rule of thumb is that if you can sell it, you can buy it as well. So you actually have an option to buy stuff in if you need it for mixing feed or something like that. The grain mill um, focuses on all the grain types uh, on, on the map. It won't accept anything else, but uh, I'm not going to go into full detail about every single um, uh, sell point or buying point on the map in terms of what you can get out of it, but I will just show you this one on the list as an example. It will also give an opportunity to showcase how many um, different crop types and uh, grass types and bales there are. So we are here in the uh, sell list and we can highlight, here's the grain mill. Um, so I've highlighted that. As you can see down the bottom, the scroll bar is quite wide because of the many uh, crop types on the map. So you will sell all the standard uh, crop types, uh, wheat, barley, oat, canola, sunflower, uh, soybeans, corn can be sold here as well. But then we actually have to scroll quite far out uh, for the remainder of the types of grain out here. So here we come out to the other grain types, the rye, um, the triticale, the spelt and millet um, that you can also sell out here. We're going to move on. We are going to follow this road up and we're going to head up towards the garden center. So here we are looking across the road um, that we just came out from uh, up at the garden center. Again, we have more of the road signs that will show you which way to take for different places if you're going to the biogas plants down that road you're going back to our salt farm you follow it down that way um, depending on whether you're buying or selling at the garden center there's kind of two entrances the first one here is if we're going to be buying any bulk goods and the second one down there is if you're going to be selling material uh, to the garden center so we'll go in and have a look at the purchase options first now as I mentioned down on the main farm we have these silos for seed and fertilizer so being able to pick up bulk material is really good here's a bulk seed so you can actually bring a trailer up here load it up with seed and bring it back to fill into your silos and the same over here for fertilizer there's another point on the map uh, another market where you can pick these up as well
back out on the road if we carry on down a little bit further and turn in here we kind of go around the garden center because at the back we got our selling point um, where we can sell a whole raft of different materials you have your grate right here for unloading your materials so moving on from the garden center uh, we are gonna go down and we're gonna cover off the heating plant and the biogas plant so we're kind of gonna move down uh, to the heating gas heating and biogas plant right here uh, sort of across a little bit from the garden center and then we're gonna cover off the lime station out on the extreme then we're gonna come down to the Photoshop sawmill DIY market water mill so we're kind of coming flying in um, to the um, area rather than by road but the main entrances are over here on the main road side um, this is if you come from the sort of center side of the map and uh, this is if you're going out towards the lime station but um, coming down here to the ground um, here's one of the entrances. there's another entrance just down the road from there if you're just going into the biogas plant but up here you can also access the heating plant there's a split in the road here so we'll go over and have a look at the heating plant first of all it is relatively straightforward um, there's an unload point right here you will be able to sell your bales your uh, wood chips and your miscanthus here as well coming around to the biogas plant we're kind of gonna be taking the back entrance here a bit uh, it's a little bit narrower there's better room uh, around on the other entrance you get two enormous um, silage pits here and another two up here um, I've never filled one but um, I have heard of people who comfortably put about 5 million liters into one of these pits so um, if you're going to be doing this you probably need these two machine sheds because you're going to need some serious compaction and uh, leveling equipment up here um, at the biogas plant down towards the center uh, here is our unload point when we are selling be it silage or other things it accepts a range of things you do need to buy the area uh, usually um, for getting the best prices out of things and the biogas plant is 164,480 now it looks like there's a big lip here but you can actually unload in the area in front of it uh, without any issues um, so uh, you don't need to lift everything up and tip it in. You can actually just unload, which saves quite a lot of time. A lot of time. Of course, over here, we have um, Digestate, and uh, we can use the manure system if we have that mod installed, or we can use the overloading pipe here as well, of course. Um, as I mentioned, the other entrance here, we've got a little weighing station as you come in, and... Um, this is sort of probably the easier road to access uh, the plant from if you are coming uh, sort of from the farm or anywhere else, really. So we're just going to head up the road. We're going to look at the lime station. It's quite a long trek out to the lime station, which is why it's handy that you have bulk storage on the farm. So you can perhaps bring a truck up or something. Uh, you can pick up a load of lime and bring it back to the farm. So the lime station is literally right at the edge of the map. Um, you can't really tell. So, so the edging of the map is, is made quite neatly. But there is a barrier in the road, just to help remind you here. Um, and we have four unloading points for lime in here at the station, which is if you're doing in multiplayer, for example, and there's a run on lime, at least you can get multiples in. If you're bringing up a truck with a trailer, for example, you'll be able to uh, dump into both at the same time. So that's really quite a convenient way of, of being able to load up uh, bulk material here at this station. So next, we're sort of going to follow this smaller road around here, uh, sort of follows the edge of the map a bit, gives you a little bit of a sense of the size of some of the fields over on this side of the map as well. Um, and as we come down here, we will come to the Photoshop uh, in 
a little while. So right across from this large forested area that you can of course also purchase uh, to do some additional logging, um, here is the Photoshop. The Photoshop acts, you, you can sell stuff right here, uh, as you can on most cell point farming simulator, so nothing terribly surprising there. Um, the benefit is it's generally also a Photoshop. You can actually buy feed um, directly from the back here. So you've got an overloading pipe where you can drive in and actually collect feed like TMR, pig food, uh, and some components for mixing feed as well. So all in all, this is uh, a really nice uh, little facility. And we're just going to come in over the water. I hope we haven't disturbed the guy sitting, enjoying uh, an afternoon of fishing. But as we come in, I just thought I'd point out we have another one of these large pre-leveled areas. If you want it to run like a contractor's yard, uh, you've got a really large uh, area here, for example, that you could put your own buildings up with entrances both towards the DIY center and over towards the road. But here is the DIY center. If you're selling things to the DIY center, then uh, at the back of the building here um, is where the selling point is, right here. And you can drive through and come around the side of the building here. In addition, you can actually go and visit the DIY market. We have opening and closing doors here uh, as we come into the shop. And uh, we have a little till point info stand here. And as you can see, um, they have supplies on the shelves as well. The sawmill is directly behind the DIY center. Uh, it's a nice large facility here. Um, if we're going to be selling logs of wood chip, come around sort of slightly to the left of the entrance. And then as you can see, there's a sign down towards logs here. Um, so your first point for unloading logs is right here. And then immediately after, uh, you can sell your wood chips. So it's, it's, it's quite a large area. It's relatively straightforward to drive in and out of. But um, overall, you just get the sense of something where there's work going on. It's, it's, it's a whole facility in itself. It isn't just sort of, here's a point where you can drop your stuff off and you, you get money. You, you, you're really in a place that is working uh, and is an actual sawmill. Um, so I do like that about the map, and I guess one of the benefits of a Forex map is, is you have fairly large areas to build those kind of things into. So we're now going to be heading down the road there behind the uh, DIY center um, in towards the village in the sort of southwest corner of the map. So as you come into the village from this side, you can see you do have people crossing, uh, the pedestrian crossing, so do be a bit careful. There's a sign there towards McCain. We will visit that in just a second, but first of all, we got the animal dealer here, right behind the butcher shop. Um, and you can drive in and around here. Uh, you got some animals and pens here, and the buying and selling point for the animal dealer is right here with the stable uh, for the animals. Just a little bit further down the road from the animal dealer, we got the Baywa. Um, there's a gate here to open. Now the Baywa, um, in the buying and selling point list, you will see the Baywa being referred to as rough ice and grain and rough ice and bales. So there are two separate sell points at this location, as well as options to buy seed and fertilizer. First things first, and perhaps not surprisingly, if you are selling grain, we'll head over towards the silos and we have the unloading point right here. If you're selling bales, you go all the way around to the other side here and come down this side of the building and where you can see the wool pallets, you also have the markings for bales in this area and this is where you can sell both bales and wool pallets. Right ahead of us here, just next to the entrance, we can buy fertilizer and up the center aisle here between the buildings, uh, we can pick up seed as well. So. Um, we saw it previously at the garden center where it had a kind of overloading pipe, but you can also buy it from here and you can fill trailers uh, from these purchase points as well. 
just outside the Biwa and sort of down towards the southern end of the village, you have your fuel station, uh, shell point, very simple, you just drive in next to a fuel pump and you collect your fuel. Um, you do have a bank machine there as well, in case you need to check on your finances and see if you can afford all of that fuel. Local fire station is right next door. But um, we're going to head back up through the village a little bit because we're going to have a look at the McCain uh, plant here where we obviously would primarily look to sell potatoes but it does accept a couple of other things as well. So it's quite a narrow road in through the village here as, as we come to it but as you can see it's quite a large facility when we get through here there's an entrance up and um, as we come in here Kind of follow in the road in and the cell point is this building right here you just drive your truck or trailer up through here to sell your root crops at the McCain's plant so in addition to the um, potatoes you can also sell your onions here but again you can see it's sort of it's a large production facility there's a lot of additional detail added uh, to the cell point other than just exactly where you need to unload so that kind of takes care of um, the points more or less on the western side of the map as you can see we've kind of covered off this little village down here in the southwestern corner we visited all the bits around counterclockwise there so we're now gonna shoot across to the other village over here where we have the supermarket the south sugar composting plant and the dairy We have arrived at the other village, just get out of the way of the cement truck here. But the first thing you see as you come into the village is the supermarket right here. If you're going to be selling things to the supermarket, you need to turn down this slightly narrower road here. Um, but it gets even narrower than that because coming around here, there's a sign to South Sugar. And you kind of need to come right around and around this tight corner. and. Right here is the cell point for the supermarket, as well as a bank machine. Um, if we follow the sign to South Sugar down here, uh, we do come in to another large facility. I'm just going to fly up a little bit here so we can see what's going on. You're coming in this little road here, and if you're going to be selling your sugar beets down here, for example, follow the edge around. Um, and you come past the parking lots here. You start seeing a large amount of sugar beet laid out keep going around and all the way around on the other side here is our cell points if you're growing sugarcane uh, you can also sell that uh, on the map so either a custom viewer or um, you're playing without seasons but that is a possibility once you've sold if, if you're bringing a large vehicle you probably want to kind of swerve around and head back out this way um, to come back around uh, this whole site because it's quite a large facility and this road over here is your only entrance so we're gonna sort of um, head back down through the center of the village because we're just gonna take a quick look at the dairy plant before we go a little bit further out to the west as well but here we are here is the dairy plant uh, down the southern part of, of this village as we come in here is relatively straightforward you got your unloading at the gate right here so you would bring your milk trailer up the dairy plant also accepts a couple of grain types that in is commonly used for creating like uh, lactose free drinks so oat and soy for example so you will be able to sell those um, to the dairy as well so do check um, but obviously if you're producing milk this this will be one of the key places there are other facilities like the supermarket will also accept your milk and eggs for example as we follow the road out towards the composting plant we get a bit of a sense of the size of these fields as well they are pretty massive uh, you do want to run some big machinery generally on this map here's the entrance to the composting plant 
So if we're coming in this way, if you're dropping stuff up, selling to be composted, uh, you would turn right here, go sort of slightly up the hill, and you will come up uh, to the selling point right here, uh, sort of overlooking the rest of the plant. You can see it getting fed in to get composted. So this is the receiving department. Um, you can follow the road around, sort of it snakes around the whole facility uh, for an easy uh, drop off. If on the other hand you want to buy some compost uh, to use as fertilizer for example, uh, you have um, the purchase point right here. You just back your trailer up and, and get it loaded on. So we are getting there. There's an awful lot of <laughs> points on this map to visit. We, you know, we haven't even gone into the forests and things like that. Um, so we have two more um, selling points left to visit. That is the campsite. And then we actually have the brewery that's right next to the farm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up at the brewery, then shoot down to the campsite. And then we're going to finish off towards the middle here, talking about the vehicle shop and the center depot. So there's the building crane that you can basically see from the main farm. Um, and right around uh, the corner, basically, we have the brewery here um, coming in. The best beer on earth. And we're going to be selling grain to it. That sounds pretty good to me. Um, coming in, uh, your unload point is right here at the back. It will accept certain grain types. Um, and again, if you have sugarcane uh, enabled, I think that will be accepted here as well. Um, heading back out, we're going to go down towards the middle of the map now and visit the campsite. So we're heading to the campsite from the sort of central road. You see, here's another one of the areas that you could buy in if you wanted to put in your own facility. And it's right next to the solar plant. Um, this little back road here leading in towards the campsite. But before you come to the campsite, you're actually passing um, the boat club here as well, which is a really nice little area. As you can see, there's lots of life out on the lake. There's people out sailing, uh, generally enjoying themselves. We are obviously going to be far too busy farming to take part in such follocks. But should we have five minutes, there's a little bar <laughs> up at the top of the boathouse, which you can go and visit for a little refreshment. But we were here to try and perhaps sell some eggs or milk to the campsite and said, obviously, if we're in a vehicle, these barriers open up. And cell point is right around here. You might not want to bring your biggest truck to get it around the corner here, but yeah, uh, right here is where you would drop off supplies to the campsite. But I'm just going to fly up a little bit so you can get an idea of the size of this campsite and the look of it, because it's got a really nice feel to it. Um, lots of people walking around. It's right down to the water here. Um, generally, a lot of detail, really nice feel, sort of very relaxing corner of the map, basically. We've got this large central lake and one of the main roads I actually carry right across it. Right here, you can see we kind of got a, a, a land bridge across it. Don't worry, there are barriers on either side. You're not going to be running off into the water on, unless you're trying very deliberately. Um, and in towards the middle of the map, we got the vehicle shop here. As you can see, we got signs for multiple uh, brands and machineries. So this isn't a kind of single type uh, dealership. Uh, it will support any type of machinery in farming simulator. We've got a large open yard. This place actually has a snow mission uh, if you're running seasons to clear the whole yard. And it's quite a job, I can tell you. Um, coming in, uh, we've kind of got a central workshop type environment. We've also got a few showcase pieces of machinery. Nice feel of a place that's actually in use. Uh, with a few static models in here. Um, over here is the kind of office side and here's the purchase trigger if you want to go into um, the store menu. If you're coming in to get things repaired or sold, uh, it's over here next to the kind of other workshop. Um, you will place your machinery here and use this trigger to either sell, repair, repaint, um, depending on what mods you are running yourself. New machinery will generally sort of appear out here in the courtyard in, in this corner. Uh, and you've got ampler space to buy even quite large machinery. 
So the last thing we're going to take a look at is actually not too far from here. Um, we've got the crossroads that we uh, met here from the water. Now if we turn around, uh, we get a set of crossroads. They're almost, I keep thinking this is sort of the set of crossroads as, as more or less the center of the map. Which if we look at it, isn't actually too far off. Uh, it's sort of the main north-south road um, and east-west roads here. Um, that are meeting right in the middle. So we're going to be looking at the center depot and the slurry storage as the last pits, last stops on this rather lengthy um, map tour because there's so much to this map. So first off, we'll just swing around here. There's a little road up the back here and access into a slurry storage point here. Now, you have room for about 750 cattle uh, on Ayersholt main farm and um, you could run out of slurry space quite easily uh, and, in, and you've got room for 1500 pigs so again the slurry capacity at each of those places is limited but what you can do is you can bring it down here and you can store huge quantities uh, again manure system trigger there I think uh, nope this one does not have a manure system trigger. It's just a regular load and unload points apologies. They were kind of put in, but um, because you don't own this area, it's a little bit fiddly apparently. Um, so this is where you would uh, store slurry. It doesn't cost anything to store it there, um, but it is a great way of coping with um, sort of large influxes. Likewise with, with grain, Obviously, you have some quite sizable silos if you're playing on the main farm, but if you're building your own farm or if you manage to fill them because the fields are very large. Um, you've got this center depot where you can store additional grain and materials. My recommendation is study this sign here to find out where it is you're going to be going. There's sort of three sections to this. Down this way, you've got root crops and you've got sort of straws and grasses um, and that kind of things. To the middle is primarily grain storage, and up to the left, you got um, apart from wheat, barley, oat, and rye, which is straight ahead. The other grain types is over to the left, as well as manure and compost. So we're just going to take a quick look over here. This is the root crop area. You've got some dedicated storage for wood chips, sugar beet, and potatoes. You've got sort of all of your straw storage in the uh, sort of um, hayloft style building with loading and unloading point there. And everything else will go into this large storage building here. Here's your unloading point for it. And your dumping point for putting it into the building is right here along the side. Driving towards the middle of it, you get these two large grain storage facilities. Um, there are two of them, one here at the front and another one at the back of there. Um, they work in the same way basically um, so you got your unload point here and uh, if we sort of head down and around the other side here um, up here we got the collection or overloading pipe where you would collect from and vice versa um, here's your collection point on the other building and again you got an unloading point down there for this facility so they can store huge quantities of grain and obviously if you were in multiplayer you were working cooperatively you could all collectively store alternatively you could sort of divide up who's using which one uh, in multiplayer you can't purchase this area uh, it's it's just a central facility for storing overflow corn and it's not going to cost you anything but it's still a nice uh, way of making it possible to keep your grain until you get a good price for example the last bit of the central depot here, uh, you've got a central unloading area here for all of the sort of grain types. Uh, compost and manure, you will deal with over here on this side instead. And if you're picking up some of the stored grain, you got the overload pipe right here on that side of the building. So that is a huge facility. Um, that you can use and of course if you're doing any kind of role play or anything like that you could always pretend it was a either a co-op or it was a facility owned by somebody else but i think we have now made it around virtually all of the selling and buying points on 
I assault. I really hope so. I, 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 I'm almost certain that I've forgotten something because there are so many facilities on this map. But it is a large but really engaging map. As you can see, there's a sense of life in, in lots of those places. There's a sense of, of uh, things sort of really being worked at. And um, this new version that's coming out, uh, that's now out on Mod Hub, is um, just another step up in, in what used to be a brilliant map, but now with the added features from the Maze Plus uh, horse extension and the manure system and everything else, is really just taking it up another notch. So I'm gonna head back for rest at the farmhouse after this um, long map tour. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it of uh, use. As I mentioned, I will put a link to DataLearn's Discord uh, in the description so that if you have other questions or uh, need support, there's a great community there um, to talk to about it. But um, just checking out a little bit of the inside, I'll leave you to explore the, the rest of the inside of, of the building here. Um, I'll just head back out and take a little bit of an aerial view. As I say, thank you very much for watching from Overcore Gaming and see you again soon.